everyone, Astro Kit here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. In today's video, we're talking about your future spouse. Now, this topic of future spouse is not a new one on my channel. I have a lot of other videos talking about different techniques you can use with astrology to predict your future spouse. However, this video is special because we're talking about your seventh house ruler. Now, for a lot of you guys, that term already rings a bell, seventh house ruler, seventh house lord, which I'll get into it in a second what that means if you aren't familiar yet. But in this video, we're talking about your seventh house ruling planet in the different houses of your birth chart. And so by the end of this video and the end of the timestamp that you watch that applies to you specifically, you'll know three main things. So number one, what your future spouse might be like in terms of their characteristics. Number two, the circumstance in which you might meet this person. And number three, what your union might be like when you're with this person already. So what is your seventh house ruler? So your seventh house ruler is the planet that rules the zodiac sign of your seventh house so we all have a seventh house we all have a seventh house sign it's usually opposite to your ascendant sign so it's pretty easy to figure out and so i'll put on the chart i'll put a chart on the screen right now of the planets that rule each sign now i would prefer or i'd recommend to use traditional rulerships but you can use modern rulerships as well so for example scorpio is ruled by mars traditionally but in more modern times, people use Pluto to rule Scorpio. So if you wanted to use Pluto and see where Pluto is placed in your chart, if you have a Scorpio 7th house, you could do that. However, I'd recommend using the default, which is traditional rulerships. So you guys can see it on the screen now. And then check to see where that planet is placed in your birth chart. You could have it in house 1, house 2, 3, etc. And then you could just watch the timestamp of your 7th house planetary ruler. So if your 7th house ruler is sitting in your first house, then your future spouse might be someone who is a lot like you this can manifest as someone or attracting a partner who has your same zodiac sign as you or maybe one of the signs that are in your big three is also in their big three and with your person i feel like there'll be someone who mirrors you quite a lot it can be someone who is a really great match or is a good reflection of you or someone who just supports or complements your natural personality the person might be someone who just meshes well into your lifestyle and represents you as a person now in terms of the circumstance in which you might meet your future spouse you can meet them when you're asserting yourself when you're putting yourself out there when you're doing something that is leadership oriented something that is you uh, taking a step into a certain direction by yourself, being uh, self-initiatory, being independent. And you can also meet your spouse in a way where it's like you have tunnel vision for them or they have tunnel vision for you. Sort of like in the movies when there could be a huge social setting or a group setting and you just see that person. You just see them, they see you. It can be instant attraction. Um, I don't want to promise that, but it's definitely a dynamic where you guys definitely recognize each other by your own personality, by their personality, and you might have a very focused intention on this one person. So when it comes to your union, I will kind of echo what I said in the beginning about this theme of complimenting each other. I feel like that is a huge theme with you guys where you compliment your person, they compliment you, they fit well into your lifestyle. I can even imagine you guys specifically looking really good with your partner or being with a person where it's just like people recognize you two and they're like, they're a cute couple, they belong together. It just, you guys have natural synastry, chemistry, it's a good match overall. Also with your union, the theme of balance can be present where you guys balance each other out. You have the intention of creating balance with this person. So overall, when it comes to your future spouse, they can be someone who is a lot like you, someone who mirrors your personality or compliments you well. And number two, the circumstance in which you might meet this person can be through your own self-initiated efforts when you're being independent, when you're putting yourself out there, maybe even literally by yourself, you might meet this person and number three your union might be about creating balance with your partner balancing your person out or having some sort of purpose together where you guys are some sort of power couple so if your seventh house ruler is in the second house of your birth chart then your future spouse can be someone who is very sensual someone who likes the finer things in life someone who has a lot of assets and i'll say it straight up i feel like a lot of you guys can have a future spouse who is wealthy who has money or is good with money at least. As you guys can kind of sense, the second house is a materialistic house. So your spouse can be that way where they like material goods, material items. They can be good at the material world, if you will. And they can be someone who is hedonistic, where they like to indulge in things. They like the finer things of life, etc. 
aside from that materialistic aspect they can be in terms of like their personality they can be someone who is supportive someone who's loyal someone who wants to support you specifically so the circumstance in which you meet this person is you can meet them in a way that has to do with what we talked about so anything related to material indulgence so going out to eat shopping you can meet them in a luxurious way so like a luxury shopping center or luxury store maybe you're purchasing something that is expensive purchasing anything at all can be relevant to how you meet your spouse maybe you purchase something from your spouse and you don't know they're your spouse yet or um, you have some sort of business deal the list can kind of go on you guys can get creative there but Anything to deal with money, transactions, luxury goods, or indulgence is a common way you might meet your future spouse. And number three, what will your union be like with this person? So we kind of figured out already what this person might be like, where you might meet them, how you might meet them. But when it comes to your union together, it will be about support. This person can be a support system to you, especially if you're someone who feels like maybe you didn't have that before. Um, they can be very supportive of you morally or just emotionally it doesn't just have to be materialistically or materially um but material support can be very relevant as well where they can materially or financially support you give you money give you gifts and physical affection can be a theme too so they can be someone who has their love language as being uh, physical with you touching you hugging you kissing you that can be a theme and also i will say Another theme that can be present too is stability. So this person can bring stability into your life. Again, if you haven't felt that before in your life, this will be a profound partnership for you since it does bring you a sense of stability mentally, physically, or even financially. Speaking of finances, assets can be relevant here too, where when you marry this person, maybe you guys join your assets together. Maybe they have assets already, you have assets, and you join them and become more prosperous that way or you gain assets through your marriage you gain properties for example you gain titles to something um you gain a lot of wealth through marriage i'll just say it that way um that's very possible with displacement is gaining wealth or stability especially through your union or marriage so overall to sum it up your person can be someone who makes money who has wealth someone who likes to make money or is good with money or just is very materially oriented number two you might meet them in that same sense meet them when you're purchasing something meet them at a place you indulge in and number three with this union between you guys it can be a union based on stability, based on support, and based on assets or financial prosperity. If your seventh house ruler is sitting in the third house of your chart, then your future spouse, when it comes to their personality, their characteristics, they can be someone who is witty, someone who is intelligent, someone who's very humorous, who likes to make jokes, socialize, communicate with people. They can even be a little bit childish, so to speak, with this kind of up-tempo or high-energy sort of personality. They can be someone who is very curious or playful as well. So speaking of communication, that brings us into the circumstance in which you might meet this person. So the way you might meet your future spouse is through the media, through social media, through a dating app, for example, or if you work in the media industry, you can meet them through that as well. So to be honest, there's a lot of different ways you might meet your spouse, given the versatile energy of the third house but the common theme i sense with this is that you can meet your spouse in a very social way when you're interacting with people and not just like a calm social setting but maybe a social setting that is busy so like a party a networking event an event of any kind that is a social gathering you can't meet your spouse that way and you might not know it's your spouse at first where it can just be friendly it is kind of platonic you're just meeting people um, in one setting but then after the fact maybe you take the contact information of that person or kind of maybe get to know that person over time I feel like this will kind of start out more so as friendship or in a platonic sense or in a way that is just purely social and another way you might meet them is through your skill set or what you do in terms of learning new skills so if you're someone who wants to learn something new and you take a class like a language class for example or a cooking class or any sort of circumstances where you're learning something new, like a skill or a hobby, you can meet your person through that circumstance, through that common interest of that hobby that you do or that skill that you do learn. The other avenue, if you will, with meeting your spouse is through travel. So specifically short distance travel. So like if you take a short trip somewhere, um, you take a mini vacation, you drive somewhere, you can meet your spouse through that sort of short distance travel um, 
expedition or adventure. Last but not least, let's talk about your union together and what your partnership might be like, the main theme of you guys coming together. So with this, you guys can definitely be friends first. We talked about that earlier where you have a platonic relationship. And I will kind of echo that now where I feel like your union will be based on this theme of friendship, this theme of kind of being your... I feel like your person will be someone who's like your best buddy, someone you can have humor with, someone you can chat with a lot. Mm. If it's a long distance relationship, you can be on the phone a lot, exchange messages with each other, DM each other, text each other. I feel like communication is a huge theme here and learning how to communicate with each other through your own personal communication styles, having inside jokes with your person, having your own language, so to speak, having your own sense of humor with this person. I feel like you definitely have like that best buddy sort of energy and communication is prominent with your union and not just communication, but also learning from each other, learning your spouse's maybe language that they speak, maybe you speak a different language, you guys teach each other things. I think teaching will be also a prominent theme in your union as well. Overall, with your future spouse, they'll be someone who is witty, playful, communicative, maybe even a bit childish, someone who is a speaker, likes to speak with people, or very social in general. And then when it comes to the circumstance in which you meet your spouse, it can be in a social setting, through friends, through short distance travel, through the media, social media, dating apps, etc. And then number three, your union will be very much based on this theme of communication, best buddiness, um, friendship, platonic understanding or communication is a huge theme with your union. So if your seventh house ruler is in your fourth house, then your future spouse in terms of their characteristics can be someone who is caring, someone who is emotionally supportive of you or just emotionally supportive in general. They can be someone who is protective or very family oriented. So in terms of the circumstances in which you meet your spouse you can meet them in a way that has to do with your past so this person specifically can be someone from your past from your hometown from your home country you can meet them while you're in your hometown while you're in your home country if you're somebody that's moved away for example you can go back to your hometown maybe you meet them there um but generally speaking they can be someone from your past life maybe maybe spiritually but mostly like past life in like a literal sense of like your childhood your teenage years your young adulthood you can meet them in the past and then reconnect with them in the present day where you are now and another thing i'll say with this placement is that you can meet your spouse when it comes to like the stage of life you're in you can be at a point in your life where you're stable where you're focused on your security your home life you can be somewhat of like a homebody focusing on your own resources your own energy being kind of like in that feminine element when you do meet your person another major theme with how you might meet your person is through family so if you have like a family gathering and there's like a family friend there or someone that's like a friend of a friend of your cousin for example and they introduce you to that can be a way you meet your person or through um just kind of mutual acquaintances you have through your personal family or your nuclear family or even through your extended family as well so now let's talk about the union with your person so we already know about their personality and even the circumstance in which you might meet them but when it comes to your actual partnership and the main theme you can feel between you and your person is this theme of family is this theme of creating a family together creating a family unit especially if you feel like you didn't experience that yet in your life i feel like the purpose of your union with your person can be to experience that kind of family unit energy and of course that can involve children it doesn't have to but either way building that sort of home energy with your person metaphorically or literally can be a theme with your partnership and also a major vision that comes to mind with this placement of seventh ruler in the fourth is this theme of legacy building a legacy with your spouse um, having children that carry on your legacy kind of building a strong foundation building security with your person I get this image of like a fortress where in certain TV shows, I feel like Game of Thrones or like any TV show that kind of looks back at the past, you have these family, I guess, units or family, prominent families in society have like this family crest with their last name and like prestige and this sort of prominence or security. And I feel like that sort of kind of theme can play out with your person. Maybe not exactly, of course, but um, the theme of like having a fortress, having a home together, having a stable kind of legacy or some sort of prominence or prestige with your person. You guys can build that together and have 
a strong family unit. So overall with your future spouse, they could be someone who is caring, nurturing, supportive, kind of like that cancer fourth house energy. And then the way you might meet them is through your family member or through um, a family member that you know, know someone else, they introduce you to, you can meet them in your past, they can be someone from your past, from your hometown, etc. And then number three, your union can be a lot about building a family together, building a fortress together, building some sort of legacy or security with your future person. So if your seventh house ruler is sitting in your fifth house, then your future spouse can be someone when it comes to their characteristics, their personality, they can be someone who is glamorous, someone who likes to indulge in the pleasures of life, someone who likes to dress up or be flamboyant, someone who likes to entertain, for example. Um, they can be literally someone who is like an entertainer, someone who's like a performer, actor, actress, theater, that kind of thing. Um, and speaking of theater, they can be someone who is creative, someone who's artistic, who puts a lot of energy into their passions, their hobbies, or their creative endeavors. In terms of their characteristics, they can be someone who is charming, charismatic, someone who is captivating, or just has like a magnetic personality. So now how will you meet this person? So when it comes to the circumstance in which you meet your future spouse, you can meet them in kind of like the traditional way people meet other people, which is through dating, which is through dating apps, socializing with people. Um, you can go to like a party, for example, somewhere that is kind of meant to be a place where you attract people so like a club or a dating event you can meet them in a way that involves entertainment as well so if you're going to a concert you're going to an event you're going to a party uh, anything that involves theater even can be relevant or be a circumstance in how you meet your future spouse and overall i feel like the main theme here has to do with fun or pleasure so if you're doing something fun you're doing something pleasurable something you want to do anything that is your hobby for example you could be participating in your favorite hobby doing that and then you meet your spouse through that where you guys have a similar hobby or a hobby in common and you might also meet them in a circumstance where it's like you're connecting with your inner child now you can meet them in a place that is literally relevant to children like a amusement park or like a fair or something like that um but once you're kind of like in your own um like inner child energy or vibration you meet them when you're in that energy in your own personal life or in your spiritual journey for example okay so let's talk about your union together so we already know a little bit about them what they might be like and also the circumstance in which you might meet them but what will your union be like together what will your partnership be based on now with this specific placement you'll have a certain dynamic with your spouse that is very playful Again, this theme of fun comes up, this theme of playfulness, childishness, um, where you guys do playful things together, fun things together. You go and participate in your favorite hobbies, for example, do lighthearted things. Flirting and courtship is a huge theme here. So I feel like you guys will spend a lot of time in the courtship phase where you're like dating, doing lighthearted things together. I feel like it's not necessarily like super scorpionic energy where um, it's super intense at first. I feel like it will gradually get intense, but it's more lighthearted, playful, childish, um, a lot of laughter involved, a lot of romance involved. Um, little romantic gestures can be huge here and spending a lot of time on courtship is huge and that courtship phase is very prominent with your union so overall to summarize everything your future spouse can be someone who is charismatic flamboyant magnetic someone who likes glamour or creativity someone who's artistic even and then the way you might meet your spouse the circumstance is in a way that involves pleasure fun dating entertainment anything along those lines. And then the third part, which is your union together, you guys will have a partnership, collaboration, marriage for some people that is very playful, childish, and one where you guys spent a lot of time on flirting and courtship. So if your seventh house ruler is sitting in your sixth house, then what this says about your future spouse in terms of their characteristics is that they can be someone who is hardworking, someone who works hard at their job or whatever they do for a living. 
in general, they can put a lot of dedication or time or effort into whatever they do. And of course, the sixth house, this theme of service comes up. So your spouse can be someone who is very service oriented. They work in a service oriented profession. They like to serve or help others. And personality wise, they can be someone who is humble, practical, or service oriented. So now for circumstance and how you might meet this person. Now, when it comes to circumstance and the circumstance in your life you'll be in at the time of meeting this person, you can meet them in a way that has to do with work which is kind of like the obvious one here where you meet them through a coworker. maybe they are your coworker. maybe they're your boss um not my business but maybe they even they could be an employee or you can be an employee and they are someone that you're serving like you could be a waitress and then someone that comes in that's like a patron of that business you're working at can be your future spouse um, it can manifest that way or it could happen in the other way around where that person is doing like a service act towards you like they're serving you they're your employee they're your waitress or something like that again not my business but service is just kind of like the main thread here so you can meet them through the service industry you guys can both work in the same industry you guys can meet through work which is a really common theme here another way you can meet them or a circumstance you might be in is through your routine what you do every day so if you like to go to the gym every day if you like to um do go on a walk or something like that you can meet them through whatever your daily routine is and hospitals can be be relevant for some people where you meet them at a hospital again service is the theme so um, hospitals veterinarian office something to do with animals or anything like that you can meet them through that way too so now that we know about your spouse a little bit we know about the personality we know about the circumstance in which you might meet now let's talk about the union of you guys together so with you and your person your partnership can be your partnership can be a lot about service where you guys kind of serve each other or Acts of service might be your love language or your person's love language where they like to do things for you. They like to be sort of, um, I don't want to say, well, what I'm thinking is sort of like servant, but I don't like mm, that word doesn't, it's not, I don't know. It's not like a good word to say about people, but I feel like that servitude energy or like servant energy can be present in your future spouse where maybe they just like to serve their partner. They like to work hard for their partner do things for you, especially like little things that make your life easier. I think the sixth house is a house that isn't so romantic. And so your spouse can be someone, they might be romantic depending on your whole chart, but they can just show their romance, show their affection, how they care for you through literally taking care of you, um, helping you when you need it. If you need something done with your career, if you need um, to hire people or you need to apply for a job, I feel like your spouse really wants to help you with those things, help you with those practical things in your life to make your life smoother. Something else I feel like that goes hand in hand with service is healing. And the sixth house kind of touches on that healing theme. So I feel like your spouse can be a healer, literally. They could be a doctor for some people, um, but they could just have this healing effect on you want to help you want to heal you in some way maybe mentally physically maybe they want to help you with your health journey your mental health journey anything along those lines i feel like they could be somewhat of a healer to you as well so overall if we could sum it up your future spouse can be someone who is humble practical work oriented very hard working and also service oriented and then you might meet them in terms of circumstance you meet them in a service oriented way in the service industry in your workplace, whatever you do for a living, you can meet them through that. And lastly, you can have a union or partnership that is very much about service, helping each other out, having a practical relationship where you guys do help each other in some way, your spouse helps you, especially in a professional sense. With your seventh house ruler in your seventh house, then when it comes to your future spouse and what they might be like and their characteristics, they can be someone who is social, someone who likes to be in the social scene or like in the center of attention when it comes to socializing. They can be somewhat of a socialite, if you will, and they can be someone, generally speaking, who is diplomatic, someone who's balanced, who likes to keep their life balanced, and especially keep their social life balanced. Mm, they can be someone who is somewhat of like a mediator as well, where they connect people together, they network with people and make business arrangements or business deals. They can be someone who is an entrepreneur, so they like make deals for a living or write contracts for a living or something like that. The list can go on with like their personality and what they do for a living, social life, etc. But the common theme here is that they can be diplomatic balanced or social. So now how will you meet this person? How will you meet your future spouse? 
what is the circumstance in which you guys might find each other so with this we've been talking about this theme of socializing so you can meet your spouse in a social setting in a social way but specifically you can meet them through a mutual friend through a common acquaintance through someone that you guys both no. This kind of takes on somewhat of a professional theme where it can be like a networking event or an event you have to go to for work. Maybe you meet up with coworkers after work or something like that where it kind of blends or blurs the line between um, professional and just social. I feel like it can be somewhat of a combination of both of those things. You can also meet them too, uh, like in a marketplace or somewhere where goods are exchanged. So like a flea market, a swap meet, that's kind of specific, but somewhere where like commerce is present even if you're somebody who's like an entrepreneur you kind of write contracts for a living or do business deals you can meet them through that sort of process or navigating that process of entrepreneurship through the marketplace or through business deals or contracts now let's talk about your union together so we know a little bit about your person we know about where you might meet them but what will your partnership be like so given your seventh house ruler being in the seventh house your partnership can be a lot about balance finding harmony with each other, finding some sort of way to be together in a way that is harmonious, that is very much union, united. I think that's a really strong word you guys will feel in your partnership is this theme of unitedness. Maybe being on somewhat of a journey with your spouse or future partner where you guys work together to create balance, work together to create some sort of equilibrium between you two. And I can't lie, I feel like this placement also gives a bit of power couple energy where you guys want to be on the same wavelength, where you guys want to be on the same frequency, you guys want to understand each other, have that kind of strong sense of equilibrium, and that can manifest as power couple um, vibes or a power couple dynamic for some people. So overall, to sum it up, uh, number one, your spouse can be someone who is diplomatic, social, balanced. They can be a very fair or just person. Number two, uh, when it comes to circumstance, you can meet them in a social setting, through a mutual friend, through a networking event or something along those lines. And number three, your union or your partnership can be about creating balance with your partner or creating some sort of equilibrium with your person. So when it comes to your seventh house ruler in the eighth house, then your future spouse, when it comes to their characteristics and what they might be like, they can be someone who is very intense, someone who is very passionate, puts a lot of energy into what they do. They can be someone who has very concentrated energy and a sense of power about them. They can be someone who has powerful energy just personality wise, but they can also have literal power. So they can be someone who is in a powerful position, someone who has influence in the world, somebody who has money or has wealth, assets, which is another form of power as well. But getting back to their personality traits, they can be someone who is spiritual, who has a lot of spiritual values or a spiritual routine or spiritual belief system, um, and more so spiritual in the like occult sense. So maybe they believe in like occult magic or um, more kind of taboo forms of magic or spirituality. Now for the circumstance in which you might meet this person, you can meet this person after you go through a major transformation in your life after your life transforms for some reason this can be spiritually metaphorically maybe you go through some sort of metaphorical death or rebirth process you can literally have some sort of major move in your life you have some sort of literal circumstance that changes your life or transforms your life in a drastic way so after this drastic or transformative event you can meet this person uh, maybe not like literally like something happens and you meet them like the next hour but just more so timeline wise in the events of your life it can be kind of consecutive where you have that transformation and then you meet your spouse kind of within that same year or same time span which you have that certain drastic moment in your life but to get more into like the literal circumstances you can meet them in a kind of taboo way or in a place that's considered taboo so we won't get too into detail about what is a taboo place or not but think along the lines of like a club like a strip club somewhere that involves like sex for example uh somewhere that's not necessarily out in the open somewhere that's kind of private isolated secluded a place where people don't usually visit that place um, and it doesn't have to be taboo or sexual, but just a place that people don't visit often. Maybe it's not like a social place, um, but on the other side of that coin, it can be somewhat of a taboo place, a place that people don't usually visit, or a place that isn't usually socially acceptable to visit in society. And one other thing is that you can meet them in a way that has to do with money. So maybe you're exchanging money with someone, maybe you're doing some sort of contract, a business deal. There can be money involved with how you meet your person, or you can be 
doing something that involves assets or moving your money, doing taxes, something like that, and you meet your spouse that way too. Now let's talk about your union with your person and what your partnership might be like. So we know a little bit about them, we know the circumstance in which you might meet them, but how is it going to be when you guys are together? So when you guys are together, there is this theme that is very spiritual. And so when it comes to this placement, there is a word I'm thinking of that I feel like is very relevant for 7th ruler and the 8th specifically. And it's a word that kind of gets sensationalized on the internet. You guys know what it is, but it is soulmate. But I don't want to say that you guys will be with your soulmate or be with someone that's your soulmate because that's so subjective, you know. But I feel like your person can feel that way for you. They can feel like your soul partner... There can be almost like this psychic or subconscious connection between you two that is kind of otherworldly, that isn't so literal or practical or just like, oh, he's cute, I'm cute, we're partners, but it can be somewhat spiritual where it does feel like a soulmate for you. So I wouldn't take that and run with it too far, maybe run a little bit far with it, but I think that that soulmate kind of vibe can be present for some people. But in a more general sense, I think it can feel spiritual, it can feel psychic, maybe even karmic for some people too. And another major hallmark of your partnership can be intimacy. Now this can be kind of sexual, but it doesn't have to be so literally sexual, it can just be intimate. This person can bring a lot of intimacy into your life if you felt like you weren't really intimate with people before, if you didn't really get close to people on a spiritual level or psychological level before. When you meet this person, your future spouse, they can bring that sort of intimacy into your life you can have an intimate bond with them a psychic bond with them or a spiritual bond with them as well but when this person comes into your life they can bring this theme of intimacy you can be very intimate with them psychologically or spiritually you can also be very close with them sexually as well and this theme of transformation also pops up again so you might meet your spouse after a transformation and then once you are in union with them you can kind of have this transformative relationship that really changes you uh, physically, psychologically, spiritually, it is a very transformative partnership that might change your life in a very drastic way. And one of the last things I'll say for you guys in terms of your union is that this can involve wealth as well or money. This person can be wealthy, they can have money or assets, and when you get together with this person, your wealth grows or you have joint assets together. Maybe they give you certain assets or put some things in your name and you get wealthier after this union with your person. So overall, if we can sum it up, your future spouse, when it comes to the characteristics, they can be someone who's intense, spiritual, powerful, uh, maybe even into the occult in some way. Number two, they can, or you can meet them in a circumstance that has to do with transformation. After you go through transformation, you can literally meet them in a place that is kind of taboo or considered taboo in society. And then number three, when it comes to your union and your partnership together, you guys can have a very transformative partnership where your partner transforms you, you transform them, they transform your life generally. And this partnership can also involve this theme of intimacy, spirituality, or a sexual connection as well. So with your seventh house ruler in the ninth house of your chart, when it comes to your future spouse and what they might be like in terms of their characteristics, they can be someone who is well-traveled, somebody who has traveled to different places, they can be adventurous, they can be spontaneous, they can be someone who's literally from a different culture than you. So they might know different languages or know a lot about a lot of different cultures or subjects. So in that sense, they can be intelligent, knowledgeable, somebody who is just well-rounded overall. So when it comes to the circumstance in which you meet your future spouse, I think the most obvious way you can meet them is through travel. So you can be traveling somewhere, you could be at an airport in a different country, maybe you're studying abroad for your schooling, but either way, it can be in foreign lands or when you're going to foreign lands. Some other kind of hot spots when it comes to circumstances of how you'll meet your spouse is going to a wedding. You can be going to like somebody else's wedding, a celebration of some kind that celebrates something like an accomplishment. So a party or festivity or even like a ceremony or something like that. You can also meet your person at church. So maybe through like some sort of religious uh, practice that you do, maybe spiritual practice if you go to like a... Uh, what do you call it? Like not a church, but um, meditation center or something like that. 
through your like spiritual endeavors you can meet this person as well and of course another more obvious one is through school so if you go to college go to grad school or something like that you can meet them through schooling as well some people you might meet them in your younger years or like younger schooling years like kindergarten middle school etc and maybe you just grow up together or end up reconciling with this person once you're an adult and the last circumstance that i'll mention now is that you guys can meet when you're learning something so if you're learning a new skill if you're in school that's the most literal version but i feel like people learn other ways than just like traditional schooling nowadays or in the future so whenever you watch this i feel like you'll meet your spouse in a way that has to do with you learning something about a different culture, different language, maybe you're learning a new skill or taking a new class, for example. So now for the fun part, let's talk about your union together. So we know a little bit about your person, where you might meet them, but what is it going to be like when you guys are in union, when you're in your partnership? So with this partnership, I feel like the major theme has to do with devotion. We touched on the topic earlier of spirituality, and Ninth House is a very spiritual house. Um, and I feel like it's the house that deals with devoting yourself to something, devoting yourself to a religion, to a certain spiritual practice. So I feel like with your union, you guys will be very devoted to each other. And specifically, your future spouse can be very devoted to you, almost in like a spiritual sense. I feel like for some people, it can feel like your spouse worships you or you worship your spouse. That's more of an extreme version of this ninth house theme of devotion, but... As you can imagine or feel in your life already, that theme of worship or devotion can be mutual or kind of one-sided with your union. And beyond this theme of devotion and spirituality, I feel like teaching is a huge theme here. So you guys might teach each other things, like literally where you teach each other. Maybe you know a certain language, they know a certain language, you teach each other the language. But either way, there can be just sort of like this unspoken metaphorical teaching to each other where you teach each other certain communication skills or love languages, things like that. Teaching can be a theme. So overall, to sum up everything we talked about, number one, your person could be someone who is adventurous, somebody who is well-traveled, well-learned, they're cultured, they can be from a different culture than you, um, someone who's intelligent or knowledgeable too, and the circumstance in which you meet this person can be through school, through college, through learning a certain skill, through teaching, anything related to teaching or learning, and also in foreign lands can be a theme or place where you meet your future spouse. And then number three, when it comes to your union and your partnership together, you guys will do things together where you learn something new, where you guys expand each other's mind or experiences, and also spiritual devotion can be present where you guys devote yourselves to each other or your spouse devotes themselves to you in a spiritual sense with your seventh house ruler in the tenth house of your chart when it comes to your person your future spouse and what they might be like in terms of their characteristics they can be someone who is mature somebody who can be literally mature where they're older than you or they can just feel older than you and given this theme of someone that's older or maturity being present in your future spouse they can also be someone who is an authority figure someone who has a prominent position in society someone who's a boss a leader a business owner and they can just be like that energetically if they're not that literally they can be someone who's ambitious likes to achieve things likes to achieve status or prominence in society so now let's talk about the circumstance in which you might meet this person so i think the most obvious one we're both thinking about is career so you can meet this person through your career through your profession and for some people this person can be an authority figure at your job so like a boss or somebody who is a supervisor to you might be someone who has like that storyline of uh, marrying your boss or having a relationship with someone in a higher position than you in your professional field and also this isn't like a literal manifestation of where you might meet them but when it comes to the circumstance of where you might be in this stage of your life when you meet your person you can meet them after you achieve something big maybe you achieve a promotion maybe you achieve career success you gain status or prominence in society for some reason you receive an award for something especially at work after that accomplishment happens for you you can meet your person consecutively after that or kind of during that sort of moment in your life now let's talk about your union together so we know a little bit about your person what they might be like the circumstance in which you might meet them but what is your partnership going to be like once you're together with them or even married to this person so this union can be a lot about status about gaining status gaining prominence in society and you might find that after you get married to your person you gain status you gain uh prestige if you will prominence um i can see this manifesting as like you know how when someone marries someone else where 
one spouse might not come from money or might not come from some like status or titles but then they marry someone who does have status who does have titles and then they kind of earn that title and gain in status gain in prominence because their spouse has that themselves so through your union with this person you can gain status prominence a title uh some sort of um authority in society you can also gain fame or public recognition through this union with your person legacy is also a prominent theme here so you guys can build a legacy together especially if you feel like you didn't have a legacy before or a legacy wasn't really a theme for you when it comes to like family for example um you guys can build a legacy through the family you create together and since the 10th house has a lot to do with the future and building status and prominence i feel like the legacy you create with your spouse will leave a lasting impact with your reputation and with your social standing in life so if your seventh house ruler is in the 11th house of your birth chart then when it comes to your future spouse and what they might be like in terms of their characteristics is that they can be someone who is social somebody who's popular somebody who likes to interact with the public maybe they have a public image maybe they're popular in real life or popular online popularity can be a theme here with your future spouse and another key theme with them is that they can be somewhat of a humanitarian so someone who likes to help other people someone who's very generous giving maybe they invest themselves uh, heavily into a certain humanitarian cause and they're passionate about humanity in general this is a person that could have influence in society someone who's prominent like we talked about earlier they could be popular they could be a public figure even just on a small scale or just socially speaking they can have some sort of influence and they might also have wealth or a lot of money as well in terms of the circumstance in which you meet your future spouse you can meet them at a social event that's the most kind of obvious manifestation of this placement but specifically a social event that has to do with a greater cause so like a gala a fundraising gala a charity gala something like that and it could be something a little bit more extravagant so that's why i say gala like a fancy party a fancy wedding some sort of event that celebrates something like a graduation party even the list can go on here but any sort of celebratory event you can meet your spouse there so speaking of events you can also meet them at a networking event a professional event any sort of event where you have to interact with people get their name get their contact and through that you might find that you might not recognize your future spouse as your future spouse right away not like in the movies where you just see one person and you're like that's my spouse but it can be more professional at first more of a networking thing at first and then maybe it blossoms into a relationship later another more obvious one i don't believe i mentioned yet is social media so through a dating app through instagram twitter whatever social media you use you might meet them through that and one thing about the circumstance in which you meet your spouse is that when it comes to the dynamic that kind of manifests is that they could be someone that comes in that wants to help you somebody that wants to support your business a benefactor someone who wants to invest in you give you money and that's kind of like the way you might meet them in the sense that they are an influential person or powerful person or wealthy person that wants to help you in some way now for your union together when it comes to your partnership with this person and kind of like the glue that holds you guys together the underlying like purpose of you guys coming together can be about fulfilling your desires this placement you have of seventh ruler and 11th can manifest as you receiving more gains after you get with this person after you get married maybe you want to achieve something that's been a long-term goal of yours and this person helps you do that especially financially or providing you the resources or connections to bring you to that point so indirectly or directly through this union of yours you can find that your desires get fulfilled your wishes get granted you have more opportunities coming into your life because of this person or just because of the circumstances that brought you guys together maybe you moved in with them and then the place you move into brings you more opportunities there's a lot of avenues with this but generally speaking a lot of opportunities might come your way you might see your goals being manifested more so once you get into union with your spouse another key thread with your union can be friendship we kind of touched on that earlier with this theme of networking or just meeting people as an acquaintance your spouse can be an acquaintance at first and then it blossoms into something more but that thread of friendship might be very consistent throughout your relationship where the person feels like a support system for you they feel like a benefactor like we've been talking about somebody that wants to help you and it can feel very romantic very light-hearted very friendly if it feels intense or intimate that depends more on like 
all the factors in your birth chart but generally speaking this union can be more friendly or be rooted in friendship so in summary your person can be someone number one who is wealthy social somebody who has resources or influence in society they can also be a humanitarian as well and number two, the circumstance in which you meet this person can be in a social setting, at a party, at an event, at some sort of like fundraising gala, for example. And number three, your union or partnership can be based on this theme of fulfilling your desires. This person can fulfill your desires or you find that you have an easier time getting what you want, manifesting your goals having more opportunities after you meet this person and your union can be rooted in this theme of friendship. So if your seventh ruler is in your 12th house, then what this says about your future spouse and what they might be like in terms of their characteristics is that they can be someone who is spiritual, somebody who is sensitive, someone who's invested in their own spiritual journey, for example. And this can manifest as someone who's a bit of a loner or someone who is uh, keen on being by themselves. And this person can be artistic, they can be very creative, they can be passionate about their own sort of creative art. I kind of get the creative genius sort of archetype with this placement of having your 7th and the 12th and the person you attract can be that sort of creative genius or creative loner sort of person. And this person can be spiritually sensitive or emotionally sensitive or even psychically sensitive too. So when it comes to the circumstance in which you meet this person and how you'll meet them, what point in your life you'll be in, you can meet them in foreign lands. So you can meet them in a different country, you can meet them while you're isolated, which might go hand in hand for some people where if you go to foreign lands, you might not know people there or you might not know the language. So in that sense, you're sort of isolated. So you can meet them there, foreign lands, maybe when you're isolated. And you can also meet them in an area that is deserted or like bad lands, like a desert. The 12th house is like places that are undesirable. I, I don't want to say you'll meet them in an undesirable place. I feel like you'll meet them in a place that is not necessarily so populated. So you wouldn't meet them um, or it's not that likely to meet them in a very social setting or a glitz and glam sort of place, but in a place that is maybe deserted or destitute, badlands, I think I said that. So like desert or somewhere that's like... um more isolated from society so speaking of this theme of isolation um, a place that is usually isolated from society is like an island for example maybe you go to an island or you go to a beach or something like that you could meet them there and speaking of beach you might meet them near a body of water so the sea the ocean um some sort of river water might be involved with how you meet your person and lastly a place where you might meet them isn't physically so you can meet them in the astral realm or meet them in your dreams this is the kind of placement where you could have a dream of somebody and not really know who they are in the dream and then you meet them in real life and they're your future spouse. So that can manifest where you meet your spouse in the astral realm before you meet them in the physical realm. So now for your union and what your partnership might be like with your person. So with your person, you can have a union or partnership that is based on service, based on healing where you guys share certain techniques with each other to heal each other. Maybe your partner has the desire to heal you or help you heal in some way. Be someone who is of service to you. This can be a spouse who wants to help you practically, help you in a health way in terms of diet or spirituality. There can be this sort of undertone of health and healing with your partnership. And something that kind of goes hand in hand with that is the spiritual aspect. So they can be kind of like a spiritual helper or spiritual healer themselves. Maybe they want to spiritually heal you or help you in some way in a spiritual sense. And one thing I think is prominent with this placement is sacrifice. So we are talking about the 12th house, which deals with loss or sacrifices. So how this can manifest with your spouse is that maybe one of you guys sacrifices something to be with the other. And we were talking about foreign lands earlier, so that's one example where your spouse might be from a different country than you, and maybe they leave that country to live in your country, so they kind of sacrifice their life there. Or vice versa, where you go to live with them in their country, and then you sacrifice your life in wherever you were. So sacrifice can manifest so many different ways. I don't want people to think it's bad, but I think 
to be together, a sacrifice has to happen or maybe a loss has to happen. It doesn't have to be so drastic, but it can just be letting go of a certain habit or lifestyle or maybe place that you live in order to be with this person. So last but not least, your person can be a past life connection for you or you guys had a connection in your past life. Now that is more like relative or maybe a little controversial where it's not really concrete whether or not someone was from your past life, but they can be someone who you just like have a karmic connection with. Maybe you had a past life together if you believe in past lives. But either way, there's something kind of familiar about your connection. There's something psychic or spiritual, something you can't really explain. Something that's kind of otherworldly about your connection with your person. So overall with this placement, your person, number one, can be someone who is spiritual, artistic, somewhat of a loner, so to speak. Number two, uh, your circumstance or the circumstance in which you meet your person can be when you're isolated in foreign lands, near a body of water, in the astral realm, even for some people. And number three, your union can be about sacrifice, giving to each other, being of service to each other, healing each other. And it can also deal with the theme of unconditional love which I don't think I mentioned, but unconditional love can be a theme in your partnership as well, given the nature of the 12th house. So with that being said, that is your seventh ruler in the 12th house. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video.